Breaking news, Nikon's global shutter A93 killer, the ZX, has leaked. People hate the new Sigma BF camera, but they're wrong and I'll prove it. Fuji's price for the GFX 100 RF leaks. Canon launches a power shoot camera and Sigma launches two new lenses. I'll tell you all about it, but first I want to thank our sponsor Squarespace. You need a presence on the web, something better than just social media. Start at squarespace.com slash Tony. You can get your own custom domain name like I have northropphotography.com. That means you also get custom email addresses. You get to design the website yourself, starting from one of their beautiful templates and then customizing the fonts, the colors, everything else until it's just yours. Unlike social media, it won't have ads for your competitors on it. You can set up a store selling whatever you want. Take appointments from clients, make your portfolio or video reel or any kind of business look amazing by starting at squarespace.com slash Tony. You can find out if you love it with no credit card required. And when you do, the coupon code Tony will save you 10% off. Thanks for sponsoring us Squarespace. Let's start off with the Fuji GFX 100 RF. This is a fixed lens rangefinder style camera with a huge 100 megapixel medium format sensor. So really ultimate image quality. Fuji Rumors has a few new bits of information for us, like it's going to include a high quality strap, a filter and a square lens hood. Okay, not too much, but we do know the price now, which is $5,000. That's a lot. That's a lot for a fixed lens camera. But if you think about their closest competition, which is really the Leica Q3, that's a $6,300 camera. And it's only full frame and it's only 60 megapixels. So the Leica is inferior in specs, but has a higher price. So the Fuji actually starts to look pretty good. But then again, Fuji isn't like it. Fuji didn't popularize the 35 millimeter format or sneak people out of concentration camps. Like Leica has this amazing history and that's part of why they command a higher price. So maybe this is too high of a price, but that remains to be seen. Subscribe and we'll review that camera as soon as it's available. Now let's talk about the Sigma BF, which people absolutely hate and they're totally wrong to hate it, I think. This is a 24 megapixel L mount camera and it, it doesn't have sensor stabilization or a tilty screen. It doesn't have a grip or mechanical shutter or an electronic viewfinder. It, there's no hot shoe. It doesn't support Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. It doesn't even have a memory card and it's $2,000. This sounds terrible so far, but here's what people had to say about it on the DP review comments. Sharp edges, no grip, not enough controls, no removable storage, only one port, no viewfinder. This is not a versatile camera. Not for me, I'm afraid. This doesn't look like a pragmatic camera decision. By ruthlessly stripping down the concept of a camera, Sigma has made a far less capable and far less versatile a device. There are certain things I demand from any camera. A built-in viewfinder, a hand grip, a minimum of two command wheels. I prefer even three or four. Well, not for me. I like some things like a shutter, more control, an EVF, etc. It's not about style for me. It never was and never will be. Style, huh? Yeah, the BF has style. It's gorgeous. It's milled from a single block of aluminum. It's completely minimalist. Sigma has rethought the concept of what a camera can be. They've started from nothing and added only the things that you need for photography. And Sigma's aware. The BF stands for beautiful foolishness. And it deserves it. This is not a camera that's going to win on specs. But then again, Sigma's not a huge camera brand. They couldn't have made a Sony killer but they could make something beautiful and they did. Here's my take. Right now, just about every camera looks almost identical. The viewfinder, the screen, the buttons, the dials, everything is the same place. Almost every camera is just black and that's okay because they've all been designed around function. They do the thing that they do the best way possible and this design works well. But think about cars. If cars were like this, we would all have minivans. There would be no need for a Ferrari. There'd be no need for Harley Davidson or a Ford Raptor or a Jeep Wrangler. No, we would all just drive minivans. Did you have a poster on your wall of a minivan? No, it was a red Lamborghini Countach. You liked it because it was beautiful. And if you have a beautiful car, which I do, it actually makes you want to drive. It gets you out there because it fills you with passion. It pulls you out before the sunrise. It makes you take the back roads instead of the highway. 
And a beautiful camera can do the same thing for you. And $2,000 for something that gets you out of bed and makes you take pictures, that's not a bad price to pay. Here are the things it does have. A 24 megapixel full frame sensor with L mount compatibility, which now has a huge selection of Leica, Panasonic, and Sigma lenses. It does 6K full width video, pretty good. The menus and controls are simplified. And I just reviewed this new Panasonic camera and I complained that I literally spent five minutes trying to find a particular setting. It has so many pages of settings that it will never ever touch. And that's kind of infuriating to me. I'm so glad somebody simplified the menus. It's available in either silver or black, but they're both beautiful. It has 230 gigabytes of internal storage instead of a memory card. When you want to offload your pictures, you just plug a USB-C cable into your phone, into your computer, and copy it off. And for those of you concerned that internal memory might fail, I ask you, like, has the internal memory on your smartphone failed? Devices have internal memory, and they seem pretty reliable. It's also not a sports or wildlife camera, so you're probably not going to be churning through that 230 gigabytes of storage all that quickly. So I think the storage is going to be just fine, and everybody can settle down. Sigma can only make nine BFs per day, because that's how many machines they have, and that means there probably isn't going to be enough. That means we're probably going to be fighting over them, those of us who do want something beautiful. And uh, Sigma happens to be loaning me one that should be here. Well, it actually, it just arrived. <laughs> Speaking of Sigma, they have a couple of new lenses, including what we're calling the Bigma, the 300 to 600 f4. Now, that, that's crazy, because Chelsea and I use 600 f4 for our wildlife. They're $13,000 lenses, but they're primes. They don't zoom. So this is as big and fast as our 600 f4s, but it zooms back to 300 millimeters. And yeah, that means it's 8.8 .8 pounds. But the price is actually pretty incredible at 6K. That's less than half of what those 600 f4 primes cost, but it does more by being able to zoom back. And there are times in wildlife when I want to be able to zoom back further. That's available for L mount, like Panasonic, Leica, and E mount, Sony. For those same mounts, Sigma also announced the APS-C 16 to 300 millimeter super zoom. So we're talking about like 24 to 450 millimeters, a huge zoom range, like almost 20 times zoom range. And I love these super zooms for walking around. Just when you want to travel with the one lens and you don't want to change it and you want close up telephoto isolating pictures as well as wide angle shots, I think it's perfect. And $700 is a really good price for one. Both those lenses also just arrived at my door while I was talking, so I'm going to be able to review all of these soon and subscribe to see that. Canon launched their PowerShot V1, but only in Asia. It didn't actually come to the United States right now. This is sort of a fixed lens camera that competes with the Sony ZV-1. So it's primarily centered on creators, so it's also a decent stills camera. 22 megapixels with a two times crop sensor and an equivalent lens of 16 to 50 millimeters, f5.6 to f9. So you're not going to get super shallow depth of field. And at 24 millimeters, it's not even going to have the background blur or light gathering capability of your phone. But it does have a zoom. And that 16 to 50 millimeter range is perfect for people vlogging and stuff. So kind of a good idea. It does 4K 30 full width or 4K 60 with a 1.4 times crop. But again, it goes back to 16 millimeter equivalent. So with the 1.4 times crop, you're still within that like 24 millimeter range that most creators prefer to work at. So you actually can shoot at 4K 60. It does C-Log 3 10 bit, which I don't think most creators will actually need, but maybe they want to get into more serious filmmaking as well as a three stop built in ND filter if, in case you want smoother shutter speeds. And shooting stills, it will do 30 frames per second with Canon's dual pixel autofocus 2. So the autofocus should be really good. Unfortunately, we can't really get our hands on that, but you probably could try to order one from overseas if you really want it. In Nikon news, after their recent RED merger, RED is finally launching some RED cameras with the Nikon Z mount. That's pretty exciting. And there are rumors, albeit vague, that Nikon is developing a global shutter camera to take on Sony's A9 Mark III. So a sports camera, really. Something that's able to have an infinite flash sync speed and a super high frames per second to freeze the action. The rumors are that they're working on it. And I totally believe that because the Japanese camera companies tend to just look at each other and copy whatever the other is doing. So I would totally expect Canon and Nikon to both be working on this. Disappointingly, they're saying it won't be ready until the fourth quarter of 2026. So more than a year and a half out. That's a long time to wait, but we'll keep tracking it.
In the comments, let me know what you think. If there's things you want to know about the BF or the two Sigma lenses that we just received, let me know and I'll be sure to include that in our full review. And don't forget to check out our sponsor, Squarespace. You start at squarespace.com slash Tony. There you can browse all their different templates, get a free trial and set up your website. See just how easy it is and how superior it is to social media. See, social media nowadays, you don't own that. They're gonna fill it in with ads, like for literally your competitor. You don't get to control the style, you have to conform to everybody else's style, but you are an artist. You create things, or you have a business that is uniquely your own. You don't need to cram it into social media. You can set up your own website that looks like whatever you want at squarespace.com slash Tony. And you don't need a credit card to try it out. This isn't some kind of scam. Go ahead, set it up when you love it. And I'm sure you will. The coupon code Tony will save you 10% off. Thanks for sponsoring us, Squarespace. Bye.